Hello and welcome to the Sound on Sound Recording and Mixing Podcast. My name is Matt Jandro, and today I will go through my five top tips to use parallel processing on voice, bass, and drums to help you add a professional touch to your mixes. First of all, what is parallel processing and how does it work? In simple terms, parallel processing is applied on a duplicate of a track. Then the processed duplicate gets fed back into the mix along with the original track. This type of processing allows you to add weight to your mixes. Also, it gives you more control on the processing as you are processing a copy of the track and you preserve the original sound of the track or mix and the very important dynamic range as it's running along the heavily processed version. That keeps your music more natural sounding and more pleasing to listen to while giving it a modern punch. This can be used on individual tracks, groups of tracks like drums, or even in mastering. Lastly, you can set up parallel processing by completely duplicating a track and all the audio files from a track to a new track and just apply the processing on the new duplicate. Or you can send the original track to an aux return and put the plugins on the aux return. Depending on your DAW, you might want to be careful with this. If you add many, many plugins on the aux return, that might delay your track and cause some phase issues. If that's the case, you should bounce that duplicate with all the plugins printed on the new audio file, bring this new audio file on a new track, and phase align it with the original track. First tip adding a professional sounding shine on the top end of the vocals using chorus or other modulation effects in parallel. Let's listen to the dry vocal recording. For full disclosure, I already added a touch of LA-2A compression and a little bit of EQ to brighten up the 10K and clean up the low mids to get the mix started. Now let's listen to the chorus that I'm adding in parallel on the Knox return track. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Don't let go, time is wasting. What is great about this is the pitch shifting that's happening on the left and right of the signal gives an impression that we might have recorded the vocal multiple times for thickening. But in this mix, I just have one vocal recording. The main issue is that if we apply this on the full frequency range of the vocals, the vocal will feel like it's coming in and out of the mix. And as with most pop mixes, you want to keep the vocals up front. So to avoid this, I do not want to add chorus to the low end or the low mid. I want to keep that body uh, tight and not wobbly and going in and out of tune. So to achieve this, I will just add a high pass filter uh, before or after the chorus on the aux return to cut out the low end of the signal, but preserve obviously the high frequencies that go through the high pass filter. Uh, you can just set this up by ear. In this case, I just high passed all the way up to 4200 hertz. You could go a little higher uh, sometimes if you just want that little top end sparkle on top of your vocal recording. So let's listen to the chorus in parallel with a high pass filter at 4200 hertz. and I'll go in and out of with and without the added top end chorus in parallel. Bypassed. In. You can do this with any stuck chorus plugin, a flanger, phaser. Um, I often use the Logic stuck chorus. In this case, I'm using the Micro Shift from Sound Toys. Tip number two 
adding a high frequency EQ boost in parallel with compression. This tip is based around the classic way of adding brightness on vocals with EQ by boosting 10,000 Hz using a high shell filter to add brightness. I still do this on the main vocal, but doing it in parallel with the added compression gives you that extra touch of control. So here's another aux return with parallel compression with a good 10 decibels of gain reduction and a 19 decibel boost at 10,000 Hz. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Don't let go, time is wasting. That is obviously pretty extreme by itself, but when you mix a little bit of that parallel with the original vocal in the mix, it sounds great. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Don't let go, time is wasting. That touch of parallel brightness boost really makes the vocal pop out of the mix, and that's what you would expect on most pop records. Tip number three, adding a lot of compression, distortion, and a high pass filter in parallel. Adding distortion to a vocal in parallel with compression has been covered in a different podcast with Mike Sr. Uh, it's definitely a great way to add weight to a rock vocal, for example. As today I'm focusing on brightening up a pop vocal, we add the high pass filter just to preserve those high end harmonics that are produced by the distortion and then they get fed back to the mix to make the vocal shine. So let's listen to a third parallel now with a lot of compression, a lot of distortion, and a high pass filter at around four to 5,000 hertz. Again here, there's no rules to adjust the high pass filter. Just play the whole mix. Don't use the solo switch and scroll the frequencies until you find a sweet spot where it sounds good. Here's how it sounds. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Wasting. And here's the third parallel with compression, distortion, and a high pass filter at 4400 hertz fed into the mix. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Don't let go, time is wasting. As you can hear, it added a good amount of presence and warmth to the vocal. In a way, we created our own little version of an oral exciter, which is a processor that adds harmonic content to a specific frequency range. Now that we have three parallel setup on aux returns, we could even play with all of them and find a sweet spot where all of them work together. So we have the chorus in parallel with a high pass filter. We have a second parallel with a ton of compression with a 10 dB boost at 10K. And then this third parallel with a ton of compression, distortion, and a high pass filter at 4400 hertz. It sounds crazy, and I don't usually use all these tips at the same time, but hey, let's mix them together and see if we can achieve some nice brightness on the vocals. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Don't let go, time is wasting. Bypassed. Falling fast, catch me quickly. In. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Don't let go, time is wasting. Hey, it kind of works. Maybe it could be pulled back a little bit, but I like it. Now to finalize the vocal mix, let's add the reverbs that are EQ'd and processed as per my first podcast. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Bypassed. Falling fast, catch me quickly. In. Falling fast, catch me quickly. Tip four, adding chorus with a high pass filter on bass in parallel. 
This is a tip that's been around in rock and pop in the past, uh, but now it's very popular with bass music. Um, any kind of music like dubstep, even some electro or techno, where you really want to feature the bass and you want to make it sound wide and big. Uh, the idea here is you can have a mono bass and make it sound much, much bigger by adding that chorus on top. The only issue with chorus is that it will make the low end and the sub very wobbly. And typically, I much prefer having the sub in mono and not have it go in and out of tune left and right as the chorus would do. So here I've got a completely mono bass track, but I'm sending it to a stereo aux return. Then I add the chorus in parallel on that aux return and add a high pass filter to remove the low end. So I want to remove the sub completely and, and the low end up to around 400 hertz, you know, four or five or 600 hertz, depending on the tone of the bass. Uh, so that way you will have the sound of the chorus just kind of sitting on top of the bass. The chorus will just affect the, the high frequency in the bass and the high mids. Uh, but all the sub and the low end will be impeccably mono in the middle and you don't lose the energy. The energy will not go in and out a whack. Uh, following the modulation of the chorus. Let's listen to the bass dry in mono in the center. And now with chorus on the Nox return with a high pass filter. Bypassed. In. Again, here you don't have to use a chorus plugin. You can use any type of modulation plugins. Uh, you can experiment with anything, but I would highly recommend using it in parallel and using the high pass filter to preserve the sub bass in your original bass track that's still playing in the mix and giving us a lot of energy in the middle of the mix. Tip five EQing New York compression for electronic music. Big in the 80s in New York City, as the name says, uh, New York compression is simply sending your drums or just sending the kick and snare or the full track in mastering to a parallel, compressing it a lot and feeding it back to the mix to add more weight to your mix or your mastering. That's a great trick for many styles of music. Uh, in electronic music, if you really want to make your drums a little punchier, uh, I add an EQ after the compression on the parallel. Uh, so to create a kind of a massive uh, loudness curve, I boost 10 decibels at the 100 hertz, and I boost also 10 decibels around 10,000 hertz. Uh, and then I adjust the Q, the width of those EQs, uh, from medium to fairly wide, uh, so it sounds uh, smooth and natural. Obviously, an EQ boost of 10 decibels at 100 and 10,000 hertz sounds very unnatural. But when it's fed just a little bit behind your regular drums in parallel, it can really add that thumping energy that you need in dance music, hip hop, or any kind of other music where you have sequenced drums. So let's listen to this mix without any parallel processing on the drums. Pay attention to the bass. Uh, that sounds fairly large and the drums uh, sound a little bit anemic next to it. <laughs> So let's send these drums to a parallel. So here's how they sound by themselves. Then I add compression on the parallel. And finally, really go crazy with the EQ on the parallel, boosting 10,000 Hertz by 10 dBs and 100 Hertz by 10 dBs as well.
It sounds pretty extreme, but listen to it once we feed it just tucked in behind the real drums in the mix. It has that extra energy that was needed. <laughs> Bypassed. In. These were my five top tips on parallel processing, and I hope they inspire you to create your own tips using the same concepts. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. This has been Matt Jandro for Sound on Sound. Thank you for listening. And be sure to check out the show notes page for this episode, where you'll find further information along with web links and details of all the other episodes. And just before you go, let me point you to the soundonsound.com forward slash podcasts website page, where you can explore what's playing on our other channels. 